Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top 5 best modern tactics that shaped Age of Empires 2. As you guys all know, this game has survived the test of time through and through, been alive for 25 years, received multiple versions, and we're now currently playing the best version of Age of Empires 2 with a lot of cool things that the players have come up with over time that led to the stellar gameplay we're seeing now on the field. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list that shows the best tactics to use that really pushed Age of Empires 2 forward and kept it alive at the highest level. All right, starting at number five, this is something that's been in the game for a long time, but we've recently come up with insane ways to do it, and that is laming. Laming just basically means stealing your opponent's resources at any given point and doing whatever it takes to put your opponent behind in cheesy ways. And for example, you know, stealing your opponent's board, you're using the scout, taking your opponent's sheep. These are things that have been in the game for a long time. Even sending a bill forward to kill your opponent's deer has been in the game for a while, although these things have been only popularized as people got better and lag got reduced as you guys know back in the day we played i shouldn't say we people played with way worse connections the ping was higher nowadays ping is lower lag is less laming is easier but there's one form of laming that is truly truly modern i've only seen it in the past couple years and it's the absolute most brutal way to lame and this is to send a villager forward wall it in and hit your opponent's boar but right before the boar dies by the villager you hit it with your scout this means that your opponent's boar will lose the food instead of you're just sitting there in the open with like 3 340 food ready for your opponent to take it because if you kill it with the villager 340 food your opponent can send five bills take the boar meat and just go back and yeah it's a walking distance but he still gets some food if you kill it with the scout if you last hit with the scout it goes to zero right away and that is the absolute most brutal thing you can do to your opponent in dark age and so this combined with all of the other laming things that you can think of have just been super rampant in tournaments and if you give a pro a chance to do it they will definitely do it and i don't want to only say it's happening in tournaments because let's be honest this happens all the time with the rank ladder laming is very very popular and although it's been popular for a while i do think this recent boar kill with the scout is just so fascinating and such a modern tactic that uh, makes laming even stronger and that's really cool Moving on to number four, we've got healing. Now, healing is, again, something that's always been possible, but the modern spin of healing has just taken it to the next level. Healing is currently being abused like no other. I mean, monks healing units is something that every single player should and is prioritizing because they realize if I use a monk to heal a knight back to full HP, that is absolutely huge. I'm saving all of the resources that a knight costs, which is over 100. And so by healing it from like zero HP or like one HP all the way to full, that is such a a massive gain such a massive swing of momentum on the field if i do this for one night it's good if i do it for 10 nights that's amazing but harold we've been doing this for years i've been healing with my monk back in 2005 with my little brother as i stomped him repeatedly in 1v1 games yes that is absolutely true but there is a new form of healing that again was possible back in the day but was not popular and this is town center healing and herbal medicine healing in the late game town center healing in my opinion is super broken back in the day what was known is you just attack with an eagle maybe steal a boar hit a villager and then send the eagle warrior back to the town center to heal this was being done but recently pros have discovered that if you have a group of archers and skirms in feudal age and there's nothing to do with them and they've all missing like 5 10 hp from some small skirmishes some small fights take all that army put it in the town center for a minute and it's all right back to full hp and you've got a fresh army for you to transition to the castle with this town center healing is a new tactic that's being popularized currently as we speak uh, it's actually very new and it's just proving to be a very strong approach to how to play the late stages of feudal age and it sets you up really nicely for castle age with a full hp army and you're not really losing anything because usually in the last two minutes as you're waiting for castle you don't want to be attacking anyways so just healing up your troops in the town center is absolutely massive and the last thing i'll talk about is the fact that herbal medicine got buffed in the late game and i think now it heals four or six times faster my editor will put up on the screen but anyways it got buffed it got like double its benefit whatever it is now it was half as effective like two three years ago and because it's received a huge buff and only cost 200 gold herbal medicine is often picked up in the the late game and if someone has like 20 30 cav 20 30 paladin and a lot of them are low hp as they tend to be in late game instead of just throwing them away they'll garrison them in a castle wait like one minute which is not a lot in late game and then bam fresh army 20 30 paladins all full hp and you're good to go it's a whole new force and that herbal medicine healing is once again a modern tactic that makes the late game a lot stronger if you have access to that tech and i think especially for paladin mangadai really expensive late game powerhouse units they benefit the most from this kind of strategy and i really love to see this being implemented in modern day Age of Empires 2. 
All right, moving on to number three. This is something I popularized. I'm taking credit for it. If someone has proof that they were doing this consistently before me, present it now in the comments. I will uh, shine some light on it. But I think I was the first guy to really popularize this. It's the TC hopping for micro. This is super broken. Basically, everyone knows to micro archers or skirms, you hit and then you run to dodge. But what happens if your opponent has ballistics or if your opponent's a mangonel and it's hard to dodge the shots? But what you can do, especially if you're on defense, is just hop in the town center to dodge a shot. So I shoot with my skirms or with my crossbows then i hop into the town center and then i eject immediately after i dodge whatever i'm dodging if it's enemy mangonel enemy skirms and then i shoot again and then i hop into tc dodge go back out shoot it's really hard to do this it's not easy at all it's very micro intensive but it's completely broken because you take no damage in the town center you can dodge any projectile in the game come back out and shoot and your reload time you know, if you shoot, you have to reload. All of the reload time happens in the town center. So you shoot, defend, come back out, you can shoot again. Boom. You're basically playing with no reload time, always safe. There's no downside to the strategy. It's completely broken. The only downside I can say is that you're not always near a town center. If I can build a town center forward, low cost, just have it near my opponent's base and out micro him there, great. But that doesn't happen every game, thankfully, because the strategy is broken and it will get very tired of it. I'm glad it can only happen on defense realistically, but it's still a really cool one. And if you remember that game in KOTD5 against Viper, the last game, I was trying to use those Britons. I really took advantage of this and it's cool to watch so i like that this is part of the game all right, moving on to number two, we've got the attack ground function. Once again, something that's been in the game for a long time, but recently, like the past two, three years, we found a crazy strategy, rapid fire SO. I have a video on it on YouTube. Again, I kind of popularized this. I'm not sure. I don't want to take credit for everything. It's just, it's not, this video is not about me, but I feel like I kind of popularized this as well. The rapid fire SO is absolutely disgusting. If you guys have seen the video I made on it, it you basically have 20 siege monitors and you can manipulate them in a way that there's constantly a shot on the ground near your opponent's army. So it's not like they all shoot, then your opponent dodges, then he has a break. No, no, I'm constantly shooting with two, three onagers at all times. And your opponent just basically can't dodge it. It's impossible. It's humanly impossible. If you watch that video, you understand it's a really short clip. But not only that, I'm going to take you back like eight years. Eight years ago, when I first started playing, attack grounding was not very popular. You just shoot with the mangano and then you walk to the side and you shoot again or, or whatnot. But nowadays, everyone knows how to attack ground and it's a constant mind game with mangonels. You shoot, then the guy moves, and then the guy, you don't know if he's going to click your mangano, you don't know if he's going to attack ground. And so now we got mangonels turning left, turning right no one knows what's going to happen and so attack ground like as it became more popular completely changed the way mangano fights go down and in my opinion it's amazing mangano fights are so interesting now because it's a constant mind game and it's a constant split second micro decisions that completely decide who will win the exchange and for all those who might not know mangano is almost 300 resources and so if you lose a mangano trade that's a big loss and that just makes it all the more exciting because it's high pressure high stakes and a lot of clicking and i love that Attack round has completely revolutionized how Magnol Wars go down, and it's absolutely amazing. And of course, the most modern tactic from the attack round was the rapid fire strategy in late game with Siege Onagers. All right, before I show you guys number one, I have a quick honorable mention, deer luring. This is something that was available for a long time. Players did it for a long time, like 10, 15 years ago, people were still luring deer. You can ask Doubt, ask Chris. I've, I've watched them 10, 15 years ago. So it's been around for a long time, but I still want to include it in this list because deer luring has been abused. Like it's been abused so hard lately. Everybody's deer luring. On Arabia, especially, if you're not luring deer, you're just falling behind. That's like what most people are thinking of. And it's come to the point that I think I, I, I wouldn't mind deer being nerfed or deer being removed from Arabia. Yeah, anything that doesn't give access to three deers for free because that's what's leading to the really fast uptime that's what's leading to like just nothing much happening in the early games everyone's just learning deer and it causes a whole bunch of issues but this is not a balanced video just want to let you guys know deer luring is currently being completely abused and the modern deer luring is relentless you just throw all the deer every game and you get as good a start as possible and that is the best way to play according to many players at least on a raid bear or arena or hideouts on hybrid maps it's a different discussion but deer luring in general very abused at the moment Moving on to number one, you guys probably guessed it, it's pretty obvious. This is by far the modern tactic that shaped AW2 the most, and it's quick walling. Quick walling was not a thing back in the day, 10, 15 years ago. And this one is Viper's fault. I say that like it's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because it's amazing to watch. Quick walling is spectacular for the viewers. It completely changed the way AW2 is played. Back in the day, if you had an army and you're attacking your opponent, or you jump on his woodline, that guy's screwed. He's got to run his woodline or fight back. That's it. That's two options. Nowadays, you're right next to your opponent's base. You got 10 scouts, no problem. He's going to quick wall it. We all know what's going to happen. People got so good at it that even if you're catching your opponent off guard, sometimes they can react fast enough that they can quick wall you out in literally half a second. It is 
nuts. It's crazy to watch. And although I'm not the best book baller, I still like to do it sometimes here and there. And I respect those who do it way better than me. And I love that for the game. I think it's really cool. I think it's really exciting. The only downside to quick walling is that it kind of promotes defensive play. But again, that's maybe a topic for the future, but we can all appreciate how interesting quick walling is. And if you're tired of seeing quick walls, fair point, they are everywhere these days. But in general, it is one of those modern tactics that really shaped how AOE2 is played. And you have to appreciate that at least at the core. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm. And uh, yeah, take care. Peace, stay safe, and have a nice rest of your day.